Let's say that you're sitting at an airport gate looking out at all the big jets parked on the apron. Because you're already familiar with the basics of plane spotting and aircraft identification, you see that two Airbus A350s are parked side by side. To your knowledge, there is only the A350-900 and the A350-1000, but the jets you see are both Dash 900s. And with no updated Neotype variants yet to be announced, it seems odd that the two A350s in front of you have different winglets. So why might this be? Let's explore the answer to this for today's video. Long story short, it's all about the pursuit of constant improvements, but there's definitely more to the story, a story that begins over a decade ago. Assembly of the very first Airbus A350 prototype was completed at the end of 2012. In 2013, the Airbus widebody had its first flight, while its first revenue service took place in 2015 with Qatar Airways. Thus, the type is nearing a decade of service. It's no secret that the big plane makers, Boeing and Airbus, upgrade their jets periodically. These incremental improvements are carried out without necessarily giving the aircraft new names or designations. Indeed, Airbus has increased the maximum takeoff weight of some of its aircraft over the years. For example, later A330 900s have a maximum takeoff weight or MTOW of 251 metric tons, up from the 242 metric tons of earlier examples. You might also know that the earliest Boeing 787s are a few tons heavier than current production models. Since those particular jets were difficult to sell off, many dubbed this set of Dreamliners the Terrible Teens. This is something we made a long-haul video about, which is worth checking out after this one. On technical data sheets and legal documents, these types of important changes are certainly noted. However, when it comes to the public, the model name is often still simply listed as an Airbus A330-900 or Boeing 787-8. It's the same case with older and newer Airbus A350s, as the European plane maker made some interesting changes in 2017. One of those more noticeable adjustments was the jet's wings and winglets. It was back in 2017 that the aviation news site Liam News and Analysis, or LNA, exclusively discussed that Airbus was working on new winglets for the A350. On October 20, 2017, the ex formerly Twitter user known as Aviation Toulouse posted a photo of an updated A350, which you can see here. Shortly after that, new images and an in-depth analysis on the new devices were published by LNA. Then, months later, Flight Global reported that Airbus had introduced larger winglets which offered several aerodynamic improvements and huge benefits. Simply put, the new winglets expand the aircraft's effective wingspan without increasing its geometric wingspan. Speaking with A350 marketing director François Aubert in 2018, it was noted that Airbus had planned to introduce a package of quote-unquote incremental developments in 2020, but this process was expedited. The A350 marketing director of Airbus stated, with the aircraft being better than we've expected in service, we'll be able to deliver some of the new developments in 2018. We needed to be sure the aircraft structure was good enough to sustain the additional weight, and it is the case. So, how do the old and new winglets differ from one another? Well, as highlighted by LNA, the new winglets are taller and also quote-unquote squarer in their curvature than the initial design. This new design wasn't a standalone change. Rather, the new wingtip was meant to complement a new wing design for the A350. As highlighted and analyzed by LNA, the revised design of a new wingtip and wing results in a wider span load, resulting in lower total drag. To explain the same thing a little differently, Arthur van der Fennet's post on Cora states, through research and experimentation, Airbus found that the span load distribution of the wing could be improved. To achieve this, the span-wise twist and pressure distribution of the wing was changed. 
The new, taller winglet also changed the effective wingspan of the aircraft without having to physically alter the length of the wing. As you can imagine, aircraft manufacturers tend to be fairly low-key about some of these small improvements, opting to avoid a rollout ceremony or even a media statement. This was certainly the case for the A350's new wing and winglets, which left aviation sites to spot and analyze the new change. Because of all this, it's a little more difficult to tell, from an official sense, which A350 was the first to sport the new wing and winglets. However, we can say that LNA noted in its 2017 piece that the new wing and winglet would be, quote, ready for the rollout of the first Singapore Airlines A350-900 ULR in 2018. It added that this update will, quote, find its way to the standard A350-900 and Dash 1000. A contributor on the popular forum airliners.net echoes this, stating that the larger winglet was originally part of the A350-900 ULR study. If this is the case, then all A350 with manufacturer serial numbers or MSNs 216 and above have the new winglet design. Conversely, MSNs 215 and lower should have the original design. The production list from Planespotters.net shows that the Singapore Airlines Airbus A350-900 ULR registered 9 Victor Sierra Golf Echo is the airframe with MSN 216. Considering the fact that five years have passed since the first Dash 900 ULR was delivered and that A350 MSNs are now over 620, it's safe to say that the majority of A350s sport the updated design. Thus, it's perhaps more effective to list some of the early operators of the type, which would undoubtedly be operating airframes with older winglets. In order of first deliveries, or lowest MSNs, these are Qatar Airways, Vietnam Airlines, Finnair, Singapore Airlines, Cathay Pacific, Ethiopian Airlines, Thai Airways, Lufthansa, and more. For those who are less experienced in plane spotting, it might be difficult to tell whether an A350 has new or old winglets. After all, it's not as drastic a change as the winglet change between the A330-300 and A330-900. Indeed, a subtle difference like this is most noticeable when the old and new designs are placed side by side. But at the end of the day, the A350 is still a beautiful machine with beautiful winglets, whether old or new. But did you know about this A350 design change? And what do you think of this change from an aesthetic perspective? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.